Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today on the Full Circle Podcast, Finding Your Way Home. I'm Jillian McMichael, your host, and today my guest is Carl Green. Having trained in performance, dance and musical theatre from a young age and worked as a professional theatre artist for more than over a decade, Carl has had the privilege of meeting a world full of people as he's travelled the world with his work. Carl has transitioned from being a professional artist and performer to becoming a performance coach. So since launching the Performance Coach London organisation, Carl has developed a variety of skills and knowledge that allow him to excel in helping his clients reach their full potential. With specialisms in power performance, mindset, executive and wellness coaching, he brings a unique perspective to coaching that is unmatched in the performance industry. Having a background in dance and theatre, Carl has a keen understanding of the importance of mindset, which he incorporates into his coaching approach to help his clients achieve optimal results. I'm so excited to hear Carl's story and the transformational journey he went on to become the star he is in his own life and how he can help other artists raise their game. Welcome, Carl. So, Carl, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you very much for having me. More than welcome. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So how are you feeling, first of all, about our chat today? Good. I was um, travelling down and I thought, oh my God, I actually feel a bit nervous. I was a bit <laughs> like, gosh, what, what am I going to say? Do people want to hear what I have to say? Um, but then I kind of kicked into that mindset of, mm -hmm. Let me just breathe. Mm -hmm. Let me just relax. Let me settle into actually what I know yep. and how do I want to feel and then what do I want to do? So, yeah, settled into my what I call power performance mindset. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> well, I am really looking forward to that power performance mindset. So we're going to find out a little bit more about all of that, how you use that for yourself and also how you now help support clients and other people <laughs> find their power mindset which oh, i cannot yes. wait power <laughs> performance mindset so really glad you're here so what i think we could start with maybe is just a little more about your journey because you're a, you've been a performer for mm. well most of your life most right of my life yeah. yeah so can we like rewind absolutely and tell us a little bit as carl's a little boy and his passions <laughs> and desires and aspirations yeah so i started dancing when i was three and it only came about because my mum was in full-time work mm -hmm. um, and I went to a childminder who owned a dance school. So I would go there after nursery and all of a sudden, apparently on one day as the story goes, um, mum came to pick me up and I was just there dancing, mm -hmm. uh, dancing away in the studio. Um, so we put me into a dance class and kind of musical theatre. So I went to Stagecoach, which... Mm -hmm. um, gave me loads and loads of learning um, how to communicate, yeah. how to kind of be the best version mm -hmm. of you every, like every yeah. single day. Um, and I just had such a passion for it because I felt so free and just so, oh, I just loved it. Yeah. I just absolutely <laughs> loved it. Um, so then when I was about 16, I then went to a more professional dance school in my kind of local area and started to dance competitively and we did everything we did ballet tap mm -hmm. jazz uh musical theater um and every weekend there was competition yeah. so you know you'd get your fake tan on and you'd go <laughs> on the dance floor on a sunday and you'd compete mm -hmm. um and yeah that was another thing that made me push my performance aspect mm -hmm. because when you stand in front of a judge who mm -hmm. you've never met that person in your entire life and they're judging you yep. on how you how you look yeah uh, how you present yourself how you perform um and i think subconsciously because obviously you know my mum very mm -hmm. very well mm -hmm. and um i've obviously grown up with the coaching language behind yeah. me mm -hmm. so i already had a really really vague idea of what it meant to show up as your best self yep. and step onto that dance floor and we well we would say you know just leave it on the floor yeah you would give everything you would give your 100 mm -hmm. and you would go with the goal of i want to win yeah or i want to succeed or mm -hmm. i want to walk off that floor and go god i did amazingly yeah um so I did that while I was doing that. Obviously, you're then juggling GCSEs. You're yeah. then kind of juggling life. Um, and it was finding, I was finding actually 
what, what do I really want to do? What mm -hmm, do I want to mm -hmm. do with my life when I leave school? And I think it hit me by about, I think it was year eight when you start to set your own map of, this is what my GCSEs are mm -hmm. gonna look like and this is what I'm gonna excel in. And I went, oh, I don't need maths, I don't need science. <laughs> and I just went in and did dance, performing arts, musical theater and English literature. Mm -hmm. Cause I loved, yeah. I loved English. Mm -hmm. um, so I did all of that and I came out with incredibly top marks, which was fantastic. Um, so then I was also juggling my GCSEs, my schoolwork, and then I landed my first ever professional job at 16. Wow. So I then had to manage my school yeah. work and mm -hmm. how I was gonna fit that all in with yeah. then the rehearsal process, which was, I'm gonna say a month and a half. And they were long days. You're in that studio from mm -hmm. half past eight, finishing yeah. at five. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to travel on top of that. And then while I'm on the train, I'm scribbling down coursework and going, yeah. oh my God, what mm -hmm. am I doing? Yeah. Um, but that's when I went, this is what I want to do. How did though that come about? Because mm. obviously I can hear when you're talking how passionate you are about it, which is fantastic. And actually to know from quite a young age, it's amazing because a lot of us, you know, at 16, 17, mm. don't really know what we want. We're kind of a bit stuck. Mm. So obviously you really tuned into the things that you're passionate about. Yeah. Obviously you had great support there with your mum as well. Mm. Um, so, so when you decided, okay, right, this is really what I want to do. Can you remember that moment and what it felt like? If I go back, if memory serves me correctly, it was a bit of a heated conversation between me and the maths teacher. <laughs> and the maths teacher very, very bluntly just said, well, what do you want to do with your life? Mm -hmm. And you know, in the heat of a moment, I just said, I want to perform. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to do. I want to dance. I want to sing. I want to act. I want to perform. And that was a bit of a turning point because I went, that can be my life. Mm -hmm. I totally can do that. I mm -hmm. have the skills to be able to do yeah. that. Um, so then getting my first job at the age of 16, mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I was like, I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm already doing it. Um, and that was incredible. I got to work with Julian Clary, which was really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and that in itself taught me loads because I was working with senior dancers who have gone to dance college, who have gone to university yeah. and have got their BA honours, their masters. Mm -hmm. And here I am, the 16 year old who's just like, oh, I just do mm -hmm. dance competitions on a Sunday, strolled into a professional environment, not knowing yeah what to expect at all. Well, was that quite different, that professional environment? I would imagine it is, but yeah, tell me how. Yeah. yeah, so our choreographer who choreographed that was wonderful and he was really understanding and totally mm -hmm. got, okay, I've got a 16 year old in my cast who's, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. currently dancing against 21 year olds. Um, so there was lots of support there, but it was very daunting because I automatically went, oh, I might not be good enough yeah. because I'm surrounded by professionals mm -hmm. I might not be up to their standard. And there were mo there were highs, there were lows, because there were days where I'd go, God, I feel great about what I was doing. And then there were days where you go, oh, I didn't pick up a step, or, oh, I forgot that routine, or oh, I, I wasn't performing at my best today. And interestingly, then obviously having my mum there would then go, well, okay, if today wasn't your best day, what are you gonna do? What yeah. have you learned? What have you noticed? How do you wanna to approach tomorrow? Yeah. So it was a massive learning curve. And I think I stepped into the mindset of what does it mean to be a performer? Yeah. How do you show up to any job? How do you walk into a room full of strangers and go, this is who I am mm -hmm. and I'm here to do the best that I can. Um, and then how do you translate all of that into a finished product to yeah. go, ta-da, like here's mm -hmm. the finished product. Mm -hmm. I've gone out and I've left my heart on yep. the stage or on the dance floor and I hope you've enjoyed it. Take the bow and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, Quite a lot to do though for a 16 year old, but also I would imagine there's an, uh, although you had good support, mm. I would imagine that is there not also an element of pressure to, you know, yeah. really give it your all, be your best. And cause I know I've talked to other performers in the past and they've said that was really difficult for them. How how was that for you as you were moving from 16 into your- Yeah, you know? it was um, it was really challenging because um, I continued to work when I was 16 and then I went to college and it was quite a weird dynamic because looking back, I felt like it was a bit, uh, how does the saying go? Uh, you were a you were, uh, big fish in a small pond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was the pressure from 
my college tutors and the showcases and the auditions that were coming yeah. where I went, God, I've got to be good because yeah. I've got a reputation to uphold of where I've trained, mm -hmm. who's taught me, what I've learned. And I've also got a reputation to protect myself, mm -hmm. to go, I can't, you know, give me any routine and I'll be able to do it. You know, yeah. give me a task and I will achieve it to yeah. my very best. Mm -hmm. um, so I put a lot of pressure on myself because I wanted to succeed. Yeah. That's all I wanted. I wanted to be the best version of me that I could be. Um, it was really interesting having that mindset because then when I went to further my dance education, I went to Lippa and that totally shook, shook me up, yeah. really shook me up. Um, I all of a sudden was in a room full of people that was a very similar age. We were very similar standards. Mm -hmm. And there was that underlying thing of, oh, it's actually a bit of a competition. Yeah. Nobody ever mentioned it. Nobody ever spoke about it, but there but was, was just there. an air mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. oh, actually you could get the job that I want. Yeah. Or, oh, you've, you've just done that really well. I want to be like you. I want to yeah. be able to do five pirouettes and not fall off my turn, mm -hmm. you know? So there was a real underlying competitive edge, which then added more pressure. Yeah. And I, I got stuck in a mindset while I was training of, I'm not good enough. Yeah. And I wasn't well equipped enough to know how to change my mindset. Mm -hmm. And it really, really ate me up. My first year was fantastic and I loved it. And then my second year, I really struggled. I was very far away from home. Yeah. My support network wasn't close by, which I could just call upon. We were doing very long days. There was also, cause I was still getting jobs. I was still working. Um, so battling the thing of, oh, I'm not gonna be in on this day because I've been asked to audition for this or, oh, I can't be in for this week because I'm rehearsing for yeah. this. Mm -hmm. um, and I found, I found myself burning the candles at both ends. Yeah. And by the end of my second year, I was just totally burnt out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't wanna do it. Yeah. I was like, I felt, what I felt was that the passion had gone and the love had gone. Yeah. And I was just going through the motions mm. and I was so kind of far away from myself that I didn't really recognize who I was. Mm -hmm. So I just ran away and I went, oh, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this. I don't love it anymore. I'm just going to walk away from it. Mm. Um, and that was a huge moment. There were a lot of people around me who didn't understand it who didn't get it and I didn't get it. I didn't understand why I'd made such a huge dramatic decision to go, I can't do this yeah. and just ran. Um, so very interestingly, that kind of um, year and a half that I just did not dance. Right. I didn't go to class, uh, I didn't audition. Wow. Um, I cut a lot of ties um, and went really into myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just went and got a retail job and walked into a brand new environment where all of a sudden I, w I had this, for what other people were noticing was a presence, there was yeah. a performance edge, yeah. there was a aspect of, oh my God, like people, people really like me, people really like what I'm bringing, they love my energy. And then I thought, that's it. <laughs> Gonna be I'm going to do, I'm gonna I'm gonna do, do I'm going to be in retail for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, and I just went with it. And then it wasn't until um, there was a big restructure that happened in the company I was working for. And I didn't necessarily agree with the way that things were being handled. Something inside of me was yeah. going, actually, the way you're treating people mm -hmm. isn't fair. Mm -hmm. The way that you're helping us and guiding us and showing us this new way and this big change is not fair. We're not being well looked mm -hmm. after. Um, so I said, I didn't want to be a part of the restructure, handed in my notice very politely and said, I've had a really wonderful time. Thank you so much. Um, and then was just lost. Mm -hmm. I felt really lost. And I get, I was like, what do I do? Yeah. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. Did you have any pangs at that time to kind of get back into performance or did anything kind of feel like you wanted to pull yourself back into that arena? Not until um, I just put on some of like kind of, I have like a playlist of music that I use, which is my kind of power playlist. Mm -hmm. And I was just listening to music in the background, music that made me feel really good. And I just started to dance in my bedroom, mm -hmm. bearing in mind that I hadn't even thought of it for about that year and a half mm -hmm. working in retail. And I was, like, I was like, oh my God, I'm moving. And I felt, 
I was like, oh my, there's a spark, there's yeah. a love, there's a passion. And I just kind of looked at myself in the mirror and said, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, this is what you do. This is what you're amazing at. This is why you do what you love because it fills you with so much joy and so much happiness. Um, so really last minute, I think it was towards the end of August, I sent out a showreel and my kind of CV to the University of Chichester and totally new contemporary dance, mm -hmm. kind of never entered that field before. And um, they said, this is a really wonderful application. We're closing our deadlines for auditions, but we'd really like you to come. So I was on the last day of auditions. Amazing. I went in, I went on the train all on my own down to Chichester <laughs> and I was so like, oh my God, I'm gonna dance again. Mm -hmm. And there were real mixed emotions of, okay, I've got to be present. I've got to perform. I've got to be the best yeah. because this there's a passion that I need to fulfill here and I can't just leave it. So went in, auditioned, it went really well. And, you know, they kept me to one side at the end and said, we know that you've trained beforehand. We love the experience that you're bringing. We want you to just come and join second year. Hello? <laughs> yeah, literally. I was like, okay, when, when, when yeah. does that start? Two weeks time. <laughs> okay. But I just went, just go with it. Yeah. Just go with it. This is, there is obviously some universal did it, path. Did it feel right though then? Absolutely. Yeah. I think my actual reaction to the audition panel was just, okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, all right. I'll see you in two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it. And I entered the world of contemporary dance, which was so good. It fed my soul in mm -hmm. so many ways. And there is a real beautiful mind, body, soul connection with contemporary dance, mm -hmm. especially with some of the key techniques. You learn release, you learn um, like that kinesthetic awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just beautiful. And I was allowed to be free. I was allowed to be creative. I was allowed to explore ideas. And no one ever turned around and said, no, you're not good enough. Yeah. No one ever turned around and said, you're not going to make it because you look like this or you're not going to make it because you're too... And was that, uh, so what was that the difference then? There was a real big change of, wow, this is a whole new world of dance that I've never right. like seen. I've never been around. And did you feel different then? Yeah. So I went in at the age, I must have been about 21, right. I want so to say. Maybe more mature. Yeah. And... Um, kind of the the second year that we're in at that time were in their 18, 19 right. mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. So I was one of the eldest and all of a sudden it became a thing of, oh, one, there's a boy. Yeah. Oh my God, we've got mm -hmm. a boy. Um, <laughs> number two, he's done loads of stuff already. Yeah. So there was a th real feeling of, we want to learn from you. Yeah. We want to kind of suck all the um, knowledge that you have and use it to the best of our abilities. And I've made lifelong connections um, and friends yeah. out of that. And um, I think the shift for me was that my heart and my soul was just allowed to be. I was allowed to just be free and just dance and just feel the movement. And it was always that thing of, sorry, as I move in the chair, it's that <laughs> thing of, um, you know, your body feels where you're moving and how you're moving and we react to that mm -hmm. in an emotional way yeah and that blew my mind yeah um so my dissertation was about dance and emotional intelligence fabulous so fun so exciting because my plan my plan um was i was always going to come to coaching yeah that was always going to be my thing and growing up around it and learning actually i've got so much power in my mind and what i think i feel i become yeah and walking into that contemporary world and oh my god here's the perfect marriage of yeah. what your head or what your body is doing what i'm physically thinking i feel in that movement and i feel mm. in my body oh it's lovely it's just so lovely and then you just move mm. oh but isn't it though amazing to give yourself permission mm to just be in that space yeah. because we often don't. Now, obviously mm. I can see when you're talking, it's kind of oozing <laughs> and I kind of want to move myself, you know, cause it's fabulous. But I, I think what's interesting is that actually most of us don't have that experience mm. and we hold ourselves back. Mm. And, and I'm curious because you did hold yourself back and then yet you let yourself flow. Mm. So when you said there was that kind of shift in you, what do you think that shift, do you mind me asking, what do you think that shift actually was about? Passion. It was about passion. 
and it was probably about my purpose. What do right. I want to? What do I want to be? Uh, what do I want to be known for? Yeah. Uh, what's my legacy? What do I want to leave behind? And also, but none of that was outward. None it of was that all was. It was yeah. all inward. It was all for me, just yeah. to know. I am successful. I can be who exactly I'm meant mm. to be, and that's okay. Yeah. And just move, and mm. just feel it, and just yeah. be you in that space. Oh, it's just so really yeah. then embodying your true self. Absolutely, that's it. You've hit. Yeah. You've hit it in a sentence there. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and I think that's really interesting because you know, um, you know, even as you were describing that, and you was moving your body and stuff. I mean, there was a real sense of as we, I've used the word flow already, but mm. I think that flow that goes with that sense of connection to self. Yeah. Oh my god. And it yeah. feels that when you were in that space, mm. tell me if I'm wrong, um, but it feels from that when you was in that space, you when you were, were in flow, things came easier. Oh my goodness. Within yeah. you and outside of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Because it was really interesting. What I started to notice was that the support network from our kind of, our lecturers, our teachers, our choreographers was really wonderful. And what I was putting in, I was then getting back, the universe was kind of answering me yeah. because I was putting outward, you know, I'm just gonna be me. Yeah. I'm just being me and I'm just going to move and I'm just going to go with the flow and see what comes back. And the universe answered me kind of and reciprocal, yeah. offered me opportunities that I thought, God, I'd never be able to do this. I went and took company class with Matthew Bourne. Mm -hmm. I toured with a few kind of smaller contemporary companies and the work was so creative yeah. and it was so meaningful that it gave me meaning back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, if I want to do, if I want to feel and be and become, it all starts with me. Yeah. Um, and really beautifully, that's kind of where it's taken me now. Yeah. Is with the performance coach and being the performance coach, it's all about that mind, body, soul connection. Mm -hmm. It's the self belief, it's the power performance mm -hmm. mindset, because we have a choice, right? We, we have a choice every day to wake up and go, how am I going to show up to my day Absolutely. for myself? Mm -hmm. Who am I going to be today as the best version of me? And that's a choice we make. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting when collaborating with others, it's that small nuggets of wisdom where you go, I feel what you're going through and I understand what you're going through. And mm -hmm. I empathize with you. May I share with you what I've gone through as well? Mm -hmm. We find that connection and I go, let me just tweak that mindset. Mm -hmm. ever so slightly and offer you this idea of what you think yeah. you're going to feel and what you feel you're going to become. Lovely. So I felt while I was kind of drawing away and running away, I'm not good enough. I was mm -hmm. never good enough. I couldn't do it. I didn't want to do it. All those thoughts. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I make that choice every day. I can do it. I can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wake up I'm probably going to tell my thing myself uh, five things in the bathroom mirror mm -hmm. to go, you know, you are great. You are wonderful. You can go out and achieve. You're successful to believe it. Because if yeah. I'm thinking it, I'm going to feel it yeah. and I'm going to become it. Yeah. And the universe will answer me and go, yeah, you are. Here you go. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> so tell me, power performance. Mm. What is that? Tell me that. So mm -hmm. the power performance mindset is a gift. I always use the word gift mm -hmm. because you have a choice to unwrap this gift mm. everybody has it Excited. yeah <laughs> honestly everybody has the the power to transform their lives i agree yeah. and it's exact it's just whether you want to unwrap that gift mm -hmm. of being you and being true to who you are so when i talk about that power performance mindset it's the showing up yeah it's the what are you telling yourself what are you believing what are you allowing into your space mm -hmm to affect what you're getting out of life. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot, I think, of what I sometimes describe as mind fog. And when we're looking forward or when we're looking at, actually, I'm here right now, but where I want to be is here. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. Where's that path? Most people don't know because actually we haven't switched our brain on to go, who's got the power? I've got the power. Yeah. I'm going to make the choice every day to get to where I want to be. And I am going to be the one who does it with confidence, self-belief and purpose and passion. Yeah. And oh, I just love it. So it's a gift. It's mm. a gift that I love to give to people to go, if you want to achieve something, you make that choice every day to do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. No one is going to make or achieve that goal for you. It has to come from you. Yeah. So what do you want to do to get there? 
And then everyone kind of pauses and thinks, well, I can do this mm -hmm. and I can do this and then I can do this. And the plan unfolds. And you know, as a as a coach as well, let's link it back to how that makes you feel. Absolutely. Because there is no there is no thought without feeling. You have to inspire yourself to go, oh, I'm going to reach this goal and I'm going to achieve it. And I'm going to feel incredible, amazing, proud, whatever that word may mm -hmm. be for mm -hmm. you and that feeling. Mm -hmm. So that's the power performance mindset. Awesome. You wake up, you choose what you want to do every day and you show up. You mm -hmm. show up for you. If if you're not showing up for anyone else, show up for you. So tell me then, because you and I know mm. um, that that's fabulous and it's very <laughs> energizing. It's very motivational. Mm. It's, it's very life supporting, mm. I would say. But some days your clients, my clients, me, mm. you, family, friends will look in the mirror and think, oh my God, I just don't <laughs> feel like it today. So what is your kind of, kind of, yeah, thoughts around how, because I know it is a conscious choice, but mm. sometimes life can be a bit heavy, yep. not always, you know, as motivational. Mm. So what do you say to those people out there that perhaps and maybe struggling because they mm. might be watching this or hearing this and saying, well, all that is good, mm. but actually that's not what my life is like. Yeah. So how, what, what tips or what advice could you give? Ooh, good that question. That could be helpful. Yes, very good question. So I always think, especially for me, I'm going to draw on my own personal experience yeah. of those moments where you go, oh, yep. I can't or oh, I'm really struggling or God, I'm just not energized today. My first, my very, very first step is to just stop yep. and go, what am I, okay, what am I feeling actually? And ask sometimes myself, ask why? Why am I feeling this way? What is surrounding me at this moment? What um, what can I take control of and what can I let go of? Yeah. Um, I love using this idea of um, what I need to let go of to let come. Yeah. So when you have those moments when you kind of land in this dip, and you go, God, I'm really, really not energized today. Yeah. Or oh, I don't want to look at my emails or I don't want to do that presentation or oh, there's so many things that you could get lost in is to go, OK, I know what I need to be doing. So actually, what do I need to let go of at, mm. in, at this point in time? Yeah. And that could open the thoughts and the mindset into a world of, well, actually, what I'm feeling in myself and what I'm telling myself is a lot of negative thoughts. Yeah. And I need to let go of those negative thoughts to allow some positive ones to come in. Yeah. By giving yourself that positive thought, you're enhancing and believing in your power performance mindset yeah. to then promote a rise out of that dip. Yeah. It, it never happens in a click. Yeah. Never happens kind of overnight. It takes work. Yeah. If there's one thing that I've really learned when I'm in those dips, sometimes you just have to lean into it. And go, Do you know give yourself what? permission yeah. to be in Do you a know dip. What? Yeah. I'm not great. I'm not great today. The biggest thing, the biggest advice I could e probably ever give is to not close yourself off because of it. Yes. Um, I always love this idea of um, what's your care label? Mm -hmm. You know, every item of clothing has like a care that. label. Yeah. It's really fun. I like that. And I go, okay, these are my do's mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm maybe not my best. These are my do's and these are my don'ts. Yeah. And actually, if I need to rebuild rebuild myself, what 30 degree, 40 degree wash do I need to put myself mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm okay? Yeah. So when we go, Gillian, I'm not okay mm -hmm. at the minute. And I don't need you to do anything with that information. I just wanted to make you aware. Mm -hmm. That's my do. I've made you aware. Yeah. What would really help me right now is if you just, you know, if I have a dip or if I get emotional, just to let me be emotional in that point yeah. in time mm -hmm. and just to maybe help me out of it. Yeah. And that's, you know, thank you very much. So labeling our care labels mm -hmm. to make others aware yeah. of- It's really important, is isn't it? so important because otherwise you feel very alone. Yeah, and I think that takes me back to when you were saying that when you decided not to dance for mm. a year and a half and you said that you felt quite isolated and kind of shut yourself off. And I think as human beings, we have a tendency to retreat oh my God, when yeah. we're feeling not great or we're not feeling that motivated about ourselves or when we start comparing and contrasting, particularly yes. to other people. Um, and I think that's what I'm hearing quite a lot about this is actually it is really paying attention to your needs. Mm. And it's okay to admit or to even acknowledge that actually today's not a good day. Yep. You can lean into it, mm. but also be mindful yep. 
of what you still need, mm. whether that's just to have a moment of emotion, mm. just to lie down on the sofa, <laughs> but actually to let other people know, not just not only yeah. you, for, for you to acknowledge yourself, but actually to include others mm. as part of that support network to help you yeah. get back on track. Lovely. Mm. So tell me what happens to you when you're in flow? Ooh, ooh, okay. So when I'm in flow, I feel I feel very free. And I don't mean free as in oh, I'm free to do whatever I want to be, but I'm free of negative self-talk. Right. I'm free of feeling like I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. Or I'm free of um just all the extra stuff. Sometimes we get so trapped in the stuff yeah, yeah. around us. Mm -hmm. And when I'm in flow, all of that noise and all of that stuff just goes away. Do you ever feel it in your body? Oh, yeah, all the time. So, where, where, so when you're in that true flow, when you're not mm. in that mindset or that negative self-talk, that mm. narrative, where where are you in your body? So I feel mine majoritively in my, oh, I'd say my whole chest. Mm -hmm. um, I think because I now have a, a real feeling of confidence in who I am yeah. and a pride so to say, mm -hmm. in what I can bring to yeah. the world. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever I get that feeling of flow and kind of, I guess, that kinesthetic awareness yeah. of oh, what I'm doing right now in this in this yeah. moment is really good for me. I just feel it kind of oozing out mm -hmm. of my chest and there's this light that shines out. Yeah. And it's really interesting when, you know, that reflects out. People notice, people start to go, God, you, you're glowing today. Or, you know, you pick up, if we go to the kind of other plane for a moment, your aura is shining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the way that you are kind of holding yourself is, is, is like really powerful mm -hmm. today. Um, so it comes from my chest, majoritively. And I, mm -hmm. if I really hone in on it, I think it comes from my heart. Yeah. Um, so the light kind of shines outwardly, but the core of that light is in my heart. Yeah, nice. so. Yeah, Lovely. that's my my flow. It comes from the heart. Because <laughs> I think the reason why I was asking that question, because I think, you know, we were talking there a little bit earlier around that sense of feeling it. So yeah. when you're in the moment, you can feel it. It felt freeing. It felt good. And mm. I mean, I'm moving now, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll be dancing all the way to the plane later we'll get on. get you on the table. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there is a sense of knowing where it feels yes. in your body. And that's mm. some work that, I mean, obviously, you know that I do like more kind of embodiment work as well mm. with my clients and stuff. And I think, and I think you're right. I think it is the mindset. I think there's something about your energy, yeah. how you project yourself, how you show up as mm -hmm. you've described, but also, yeah, where you feel it. Because I think if you know where you feel it, mm you can then tap back in. Yeah. So if you're having a bit of a crappy day, yeah. then you can say, okay, well, maybe I just need to kind of top up my tank a little bit and, yep. and tap back in at some point whenever you're ready. Mm. And so that was really curious about that flow because I don't think we necessarily always in flow. No. And we don't always know where that feels. And I think it was lovely to say that that projects. And I think you're right. People notice it. It's like when mm. you describe going to work in the... <laughs> the retail <laughs> <Yes>. organization, <laughs> hey, they loved your energy and stuff. Um, so I think energy is really important. Yeah. And so as part of that kind of, I'm gonna get hopefully, power performance mindset. Oh yes. Um, what is so important about having the right energy then to be able to really make those transformational shifts that I think you're talking about? Yes. The importance of having that energy is one, it fills you up. I always, I always get the the feeling of heat, heat mm -hmm. rising. Mm -hmm. um, or if you are a visual, if you're a visual person, you can imagine a light energy or a light yep. source traveling up from within and out. And it links back to kind of that almost, I guess, holistic universal yep. is the universe is listening and I'm here. What we're putting out, we will get back. Yep. So when you're faced in times of challenge or times when you're in that dip or there's something that feels uncomfortable i always like to think okay let's let's just take a moment of mindfulness here and just go oh i've noticed something mm. where's that feeling for me what sparked that feeling for me where's it coming from and what around me at that minute is making me feel this way yeah taking that moment of mindfulness alters the energy you know we do a lot of breath work yeah. we focus mm -hmm. a lot of where are we feeling it where's yeah. our heart center and placing that energy in your body somewhere means that you can then harness that power and kind of i guess kinesthetically own it 
mm. and make it yours. For some people, the energy is in their hands. For some, it's in their feet. It can be their head. Um, but where you place that energy really matters because if you can hone in yeah. and go, this is why I'm feeling it for me right now. What do I want to do with it? How do I want to push it and project yeah. it outward to alter and change the current state I'm in, the current situation I'm in, what I'm receiving from the world? And it does come back to the energy. What you put out, what you put outward, yeah, you get, get back. back. Yeah, I absolutely, completely agree with you. And I love what you said earlier on as well in the conversation in terms of what you think. I mean, I, there's a state, there's a there's a quote that I've I've used many times myself, which is what you think you, you feel. Yeah. So what, but also what you think you believe and what you believe you become. And I think I, so it kind of very much relates to, mm. to what you've been talking about. And I, I really like that concept of, of how you can, yeah, really tune in, but also pay attention yes. to what's going on. But what I'm also hearing is actually that you're not beating yourself up along the way. Yeah. You're keeping your mindset positive mm -hmm. and you're being compassionate and kind to yourself at the same time. Always. Those are my words, but I'm just kind of yeah, like- Yeah, but always, that, yeah. That you've... kind of sense of, of, of really being good with yourself. Mm, yeah. So through this journey, because I know this is how you're helping your clients now, mm. there did come a time, like you said, that you wanted to move from being the artist, the yes. performance artist, into then becoming a professional coach and mm. helping people with their performance mindset. Mm. So when did that come about for you? What was that kind of catalyst, that turning point? Yeah, um, so really interestingly, um, the coaching has always been a part of my life mm -hmm. and What's really wonderful is that I've collaborated with uh, Wishfish mm -hmm. to come and develop certain things like presence and impact, you know, how we show up and how we what, what we put out, we get back and all of that stuff. And we intertwined the, the dance aspect and we got people really out of their comfort zones to go, let's really stretch here. If you can do this, you can do anything because it's so otherworldly. Mm -hmm. um, so actually getting people into the physical movement oh, of physical yeah. bodies. Oh yeah, stuff. we yeah. would be mm -hmm. going in and we I still do now, you know, I'm going into corporate buildings and corporate companies and we're doing desk discos and we're doing <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and we've got them doing, you know, like kind of uh, dance routines in mm -hmm. office spaces. Most most clients use it. They still do it now when they get back together, mm -hmm. which is lovely because mm -hmm. that's that gift of yeah. I've given you the gift of power performance mindset mm -hmm. here. How you choose to use it is totally up to you. Um, so there was a real feeling of, I could do this. Mm -hmm. I could do this when my body gets old and my bones start to break and I just can't do it anymore. Um, so there was always that thought. The thing that shifted it for me was COVID. My world stopped. Yeah, because you'd had to stop traveling, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, I was traveling. I was um, performing loads. I forgot, and... I forgot all that would have stopped, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. So mm -hmm. at this point in time, I was working on cruise ships. So that entire industry just totally shut down and we were all kind of left. Mm. And just a bit like, well, what what, what do we do now? Yeah. Um, so that was really interesting because my world totally altered and I went, oh, this career that I'm currently in isn't going to be around forever. I faced my reality of mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to dance until I'm, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I, I won't be able to do it. So what am I going to do? What's my what's my protective plan here to make sure that I'm OK, you know, financially st yeah, stable sure. and happy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all the things that really matter to me? And I went, well, I'm going to get my coaching qualification. I'm going to do it now. I've got time. You know, we were kind of um, in that period where the world started to open up again. And that's where me and you yeah. got in contact. Mm -hmm. And I went, I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's, you know, dive in. I, and I did. I dived headfirst into that world. And all of a sudden, I found a place that my passion for people, because, you know, we work with people all over my passion for people, my passion for performance and how, you know, how we choose to be and how we alter our mind to feel better about ourselves was there. So it all it comes was, together. Yeah, and it just, fe it just fell. And I remember when, you know, I got the piece of paper that said, yes, I can do this. And I thought, I've, I've, this is it. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to give the gifts that I've, kind of gathered over my life and I want to share them and I want to help people go, oh, I'm going to show up in my life and be the best person I could possibly be. And um, it just encompassed everything that I love about 
life. So tell me then, just as we start to wrap our conversation mm. up, because that's an amazing kind of, just lovely, <laughs> just capture that moment mm. right there. Um, what have you learned? What's been the biggest learnings? Because you have had, you know, twists and turns mm. like you're on the journey. But but when you look back on your, you know, your life so far, is there anything mm. jumping out around what have you learned the most about yourself? I'm sure there's plenty. But... There is plenty. I'm just thinking, what's my key? What is my key learning and my key takeaway? Never let your sparkle dim because you feel like you can't. I love that. That's my big, yeah. big takeaway. Um just never lose your self-belief because mm. once you've lost that, it's really hard to find who you are again and what makes yeah. your heart sing. Um, so yeah, never lose the, never lose the sparkle that makes you, you. That's amazing. That you, being you is your power. Absolutely. Well, you know, everyone else is taken. So yes, exactly. <laughs> you might as well be so yourself. Why be right? yourself? Yeah. <laughs> and why not be yourself? Exactly. But yeah, again, easier said than done, but mm. I love that. And I think it's really, really inspirational actually and i love that yeah don't let your sparkle mm. yeah not to be you <laughs> and so any other top tips just one or two things anything else that you think you could add just to kind of finish off our conversation that would be useful for those people who are listening and maybe getting a bit excited about mm. some change or some coaching or some power performance mindset mm. <laughs> what else could you give them so my top three tips that i love to give is dance in the kitchen i love it <laughs> I, I actually do dance around in my living room. Yep. And in fact, in my hotel last night, I put music on and I did dance in in my hotel room. So I always say like dance in the kitchen is an overall thing. Mm -hmm. But if you want to sing in the shower, if you just want to have a boogie, mm -hmm. whatever's going to make you feel alive and yep. really present in that moment, do it. So dance in the kitchen. My second one would be allow the space to go. I'm not okay today and that's okay. Mm. Allow that space, allow that feelings, but then bring an awareness to what's going to help you. Mm. What's What do you need to let go of to let come? And then my third top tip ever is just believe in you. Yeah. Believe in your power, believe in what you bring to the world because no one can do it like you can. So yeah, they are my top three tips. Well, from... you, hear, you heard it here, <laughs> those three top tips. Uh, actually, to be honest, amazing. And I would agree with each and every one of them from my own personal perspective as well. But actually hearing it from yourself is lovely and it's really, really inspirational. So where can people get hold of you? You can find me at thePerformancecoachLondon.co.uk online. Um, I'm also on Instagram at the underscore performance coach. Um, and then I'm also on... God, the list goes on and on because we live in a world of social we media. Go on, um, get it all so out there. So my TikTok is mm -hmm. TPC London. Um, and I am also, I've just joined Threads, the new thing. It's new, isn't it? I've just joined as well. Very yeah. new. I'm a bit like, ooh. But you can find me on all major social platforms. Yeah. Uh, you can find me online as well. So awesome. I'm all That's over the place. Great. Fabulous. <laughs> now, one final question. Mm. Do you still dance in your kitchen? <laughs> every day <laughs> every day without a doubt every day um yeah i always say i don't say i'm a dancer anymore because mm -hmm. that was a career what i say yeah. now is i'm a creative oh i love it so yeah. i will always be creative no matter what i do okay you know if there's a song that makes me go oh just like have a little just get on down. i'm just gonna yeah. flow that's probably the best way to do it just flow if you feel the need to do it don't fight it, just do. Just flow. Go with it. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Cal. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you very, very much. And can I just say, without you during that point of transition in my life, I would be incredibly lost and wandering around aimlessly going, what am I doing if I'm not a dancer? <laughs> so I just want to thank you thank to you. say thank you for giving me the opportunity to go, oh, there's a there's a, a a world out there that is perfect for me. So thank, thank you so you. much. No, you're more than welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>